In this video, we'll be talking about all things styles related in Capture One Pro. Hi there, Michael Volshinovich here from Vibrant Shot. You can find me via the social media links below and also at VibrantShot.com. So in this video, I really wanted to cover all things relating to styles and presets because I think it's one of those features that a lot of people don't end up taking advantage of because they just don't want to invest the time in you know both creating the styles and also figuring out how all of this stuff works and uh, you know where it might actually be useful. So um, it's not necessarily immediately obvious how you actually should work with styles and what the best practices are. So that's just one of the things that I wanted to cover within this video and we're gonna be looking at it from the standpoint of how do we use styles and presets and also how do we create them and manage them. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start on the actual usage end because uh, for a lot of people you may not end up creating uh, your own styles. You may end up just using uh, a pre-created set of style packs, which um, both phase one sells and a bunch of others. In fact, I have my own set of styles that are for sale on uh, the phase one website. You can find the link for that down below. So uh, sorry for the shameless plug, but let's go ahead and actually get started on how do we use them and then we'll move on to the side of managing and creating styles. So right out of the gate, you may be wondering what the difference is between a style and a preset. And the best way to think about it is that a style is really a collection of presets where presets are essentially a preset on a particular tool, whereas styles combine various presets together to give your image an overall look, a particular style, if you will. So if we, for example, go into the black and white tab and we click on this little uh, three row item here, we can see all the different presets that are available out of the gate uh, within Capture One. So these are presets that change the settings, as you can see over here, of the black and white adjustment only. They don't change anything else. They don't change, for example, exposure, levels, curves, none of that. If you want to combine a look that has certain, you know, let's say a certain black and white look, a certain amount of you know, contrast, either through levels or curves, uh, clarity settings, film grain, all of that stuff together, that would become a style. Whereas presets are helpful really for something like the black and white where you can get a particular look out of the black and white but not necessarily change any of the other settings. So it's really up to you which one you use depending on what the purpose is. I think for black and white presets are really useful. I find that for other tools they're not really particularly helpful because um, on their own they don't really stand up to anything. So I tend to uh, just use it for black and white and maybe something like film grain if you consistently have a particular film grain that you like at various export sizes you may want to create a particular style or a particular preset for film grain. But uh, generally speaking we're going to be dealing with styles uh, just because they're going to be the more common thing that you're going to use. So first off, uh, within our tab here, if you don't see styles available, uh, you probably don't have this tab open, which is um, the adjustments tab. So if you don't see it, just uh, right click anywhere here and just say add tool tab and just uh, make sure that adjustments is available and it will show you the tab over here. And within that, we have a couple of different things. So first of all, you have your different styles here that you can kind of go through. And just as soon as you hover them, they'll actually apply to whatever image you have selected. So you get a quick preview. Down here, you get an adjustments clipboard, which is going to show you any adjustments that have been copied to the clipboard. So you can actually customize what's in that clipboard and apply it. Um, that's a bit of a digression because ultimately we're not really covering adjustments clipboard in this, but that's just kind of to give you an idea what's going on here. And this styles and presets section tells you all of the different styles and presets that have been applied to your image. So if, for example, we go in here and we apply this style that I created here to this image, we're going to see that it shows up over here. And if I now go into our black and white tab and we select a black and white adjustment, which we probably wouldn't do in this particular order, but for demonstrative purposes, you can see that those two are both showing up here. And if we want to, we can just remove any sort of style or preset right out of this box over here. So that's just basically telling you what has been applied to this particular image. So beginning on the usage end, one thing that I find is particularly helpful when using styles, and it's a really nice new feature within Capture 112, is that you can apply a style as its own layer. And this is really helpful because we can really fine tune how much of that style we want to see applied to an image. So if we take one of these uh, styles that I created here for Capture 1, for example, uh, this one here, 
um, the goal is to have it correct for certain skin tones. Now, if we apply it the way it is, it's a little too much. It's actually desaturating the skin too much, and it's really kind of neutralizing that tone a little more than we want. So what we can do is we can actually right-click it, or two-finger click it if you're on a Mac, and you can say apply to new layer. So that's actually going to apply that style to a new layer. Now, one thing you'll notice is that we don't see styles and presets over here showing that particular preset when it's applied as a layer, because that's really, it's not applied to the image, it's applied to a layer within the image. So you won't see it at that point, but you will see it if you jump into any of the tabs that show the layers panel. So within here, what we can do now is we can start backing off the opacity. So if we start at zero and we really start to increase that, you can see that around 55% or so, that really creates a nice pleasing skin tone. And that's really a nice way to go about it because you can kind of think about it when you're creating your own styles. Uh, one thing that I generally encourage is that your style go a little too far in maybe a certain you know coloring or a certain uh, exposure or contrast depending on what its focus really is, uh, have it go a little too far um, from what you would normally use because you never know what image is going to be applied to. So it may be applied to an image with very little contrast. Let's say your style creates a ton of contrast. Um, so it may be applied to one that has very little or it may be applied to one that has a lot already. So depending on uh, the starting point, you will need to back it off here or there. So it's always better to go a little too far because then the user, whether it's yourself or you're um, putting these out there for other people to use, uh, they can go in and they can just do exactly this. They can apply it as a layer and then back it off however much they need to have it um, you know, applied within their image. And at any point, of course, if you don't want that particular style applied, you can always just delete the layer uh, that was created from that style. Now, when we go back to here, um, it was for as far as usage, that's kind of the main thing that I really wanted to show because as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, one other thing I will note is that you can apply multiple styles at a time. So for example, we can apply this one here and then similarly, we can apply another style over top of that. And so what I um, think you just need to be aware of when you apply multiple styles is that they don't um, layer on top of each other. Uh, if you apply them as layers, the effect will be different than when you apply them just to the image. Um, because if you apply them to a layer, let's say that one style makes an exposure adjustment of uh, plus one, and then the other style makes another exposure adjustment of plus one. If you apply them this way, you will only get an exposure adjustment of plus one because it basically takes um, whatever is the last one or, that you've applied, which is in this case, this one, you can see that this one says overridden, um, which says that there are partially, there's elements within that particular style that have been overridden, at least partially, by this particular style. Now, so what will happen going back to our example where we had an exposure adjustment of one, they don't uh, double up. So it's not plus one plus one, it's just plus one because if this one may do a plus one and then this one will also increase by plus one. So this one will just override the previous one. Whereas if we apply these as layers, they will actually um, cumulatively apply to a plus two correction. So just be aware of that, depending on if you're applying as layers or applying to the image, um, the way that they layer on top of one another will be a little bit different. So just remember that if you're applying directly to the image, it overrides the settings of whatever is below it. And if you're applying to layers, it will cumulatively add those different settings. So that's just one thing to be aware of there. So that's really all I wanted to cover um, in the way of actual use. Uh, I briefly showed you how to use uh, presets. Those are really straightforward. Again, you can just click here and choose a preset. Once you've made a preset, you can save it easily through here. And that is really all I'm gonna cover as far as presets because they're super straightforward. Um, they work very much like styles do. So really my, my focus here is going to be on the styles themselves. So let's move on to the creation side now so I can show you both how to kind of manage and organize these styles and also what some of the best practices are for creating the style itself. So when creating your style, the first thing I recommend is to have your image reach some sort of a fairly neutral state. So if it's really off as far as white balance or perhaps you know, you've know got uh, really deep shadows or really bright highlights, I would recommend backing all of that stuff off to get it to a fairly neutral state where you think it's a fairly common starting point for any image. Because if it really, if you start off with an image that has a lot of extremes, it becomes very difficult to universally apply your particular style. So what I recommend for that is, um, typically I'm gonna work off the background layer for our style because I find it's just easier when you're working with things like black and white. Um, black and white cannot be applied 
directly from a particular layer. Um, generally, what you can do is you can apply any layer as a style. So if I create a new layer here and I call it my style, uh, style, let's spell that right. I can right click this layer and I can save the adjustments that are within that layer as a style or I can also apply adjustments. So if I um, want to apply the adjustments that we've saved, we can see that we can apply any of those from there as well. And it's going to, you can see it kind of dancing around here and making those different adjustments. But uh, as a, kind of going back, as I said, you can save those adjustments as a style and that will work perfectly fine. The only problem with that is that you can't uh, create any sort of black and white based adjustments. Um, within a particular layer. Adjustments for black and white always have to be applied to the background. So anytime you're doing those, you have to work on the background layer instead. So given that um, restriction, I tend to work on the background for creating the style. And then I'll create another layer called uh, base. And this will essentially adjust my image to create sort of an even, uh, you know, sort of well-balanced image as a base image. So I might, for example, recover the highlights. I might recover the shadows and, you know, adjust the white balance or whatever needs to happen. Of course, we need to fill that uh, particular layer. So let's fill mask. We can see that happening there. And, um, you know, if I have to make a white balance adjustment, maybe this image is too warm to begin with, uh, I will do that within there. And then that will kind of live as its own set of adjustments. And they're not going to necessarily be copied into my preset because obviously those adjustments are specific to that image. And so what we're basically saying is let's create a preset which will apply to most neutrally adjusted images. And obviously from there you can adjust the opacity as needed, but you always want to start with a neutral base. Like you wouldn't want to start with an image that has, you know, an extremely cool white balance. Uh, let's see, where's our white balance slider? So if you, you know, we're something like this, you wouldn't want to start creating your adjustments on something like this because it just, it doesn't really make sense because most images won't necessarily start here. I mean, unless you're very commonly shooting uh, super cool images and you want to have a style for yourself that you're going to apply to images of this nature, generally it's not really a good practice. So we've made our adjustments there to get our image to a neutral state and now we can actually begin applying all of the stuff that we want to save to our style to our background layer. So what I generally would recommend is that you not really muck about with the exposure section uh, for your uh, your preset because uh, I should say for your style just because these are kind of the things that a user may want to adjust manually as they apply. So let's say, you know, exposure, you don't really want to override their exposure settings. You just kind of want to keep that um, so that these can be fine tuned by the user after the fact. Uh, high dynamic range, again, you know, you can, it's, it's probably not ideal to apply it to there, but you can certainly play around with those values. They're, you know, kind of in that gray area where it's, it's probably okay to mess with these, but um, you know, if you can avoid it, then that's great. Uh, things like white balance, I wouldn't recommend adjusting within your style because again, white balance will, you know, the user will want to adjust their white balance as is needed for their image. And so uh, you don't really want to muck about with that. Now, of course, if you're creating a style that you're always going to be using just for yourself and you're always going to be applying it as a new layer, then all these restrictions don't necessarily exist because when you apply them as a new layer, um, they will just sort of stack on top of one one another. Whatever you had in your background um, will stay the same and then your new style will just apply on top of that as we discussed. But as I suggested, you know, white balance is just one thing that you don't really want to touch here, especially. So like this is kind of like, eh, not, not ideal. This is gray area, but then everything else really is kind of fair game for adjustments. So the best thing to really use for uh, creating styles are things like levels, curves for curves in particular using uh, the different channels within curves this is really nice for color grading so you know whatever um, adjustments you want to make there you can certainly do that and um, same thing with levels let's say we want to you know less contrast maybe more contrast in the highlights something along these lines uh, in the color editor we can also play around with the color balance tool. This is a really nice one for creating style adjustments because it's just a nice tool for color grading in general, as well as the color editor. So you can de definitely select, you know, certain ranges of, uh, of tones. You know, for example, if we're working with skin, we can go to the skin tone section or in the advanced section, we can select a skin tone and really operate on that. So, you know, typically a skin tone will fall within a range like this. So you can have it, you know, saturate, desaturate, whatever you'd like. Uh, and you can adjust on that. So 
really anything in the color editor except for the white balance tools and then in the exposure section really again anything except for these uh, this main section here of exposure and you know maybe high dynamic range but again that one is is not too bad to, to play around with so that's really what I encourage you to adjust when it comes to the style itself and once you've got your style nailed down then we can go ahead and actually save it so we're going to go back into our adjustments uh, tab here and we're going to click on these three dots and we're just going to save user style so one thing that you want to do before you uh, haphazardly hit save is to go through this list and make sure that all the stuff that's in here um, really conforms to what we just talked about, which is, you know, let's not make adjustments to things like white balance because those won't really apply well when they're moved to different images. So we know that we operated on levels, curves, uh, we use the color editor. So that's really what we want to apply. Uh, another thing you want to make sure that you don't apply is things like rating. Uh, so in, within the metadata, we've got rating and color tag. And unless, of course, this is a style that you're applying for ratings for some reason, uh, generally speaking, you don't want to be applying a rating as part of your style. So just make sure that you go through uh, all of these different areas and check off whatever is appropriate that you actually do want to save for later use. Once you're ready with that, you can just hit save. And when you do this, it will actually help you to find exactly where all of the styles are being saved. So on a Windows machine and a Mac, it's in different place, but you can kind of go through here and you can see that it is library, application support, capture one and styles on a Mac. And of course, if you're on a PC, you will be able to find it the same way. But basically when it comes to organizing styles, this is really what you need to use. There's no way to kind of drag styles around over here. You can't drag and drop them, create subfolders for your styles. And I do encourage you to create subfolders because otherwise if you have, you know, a hundred styles in here, it becomes very difficult to really manage what is going on. So at this point, you may want to create a subfolder called, you know, my custom style. So you'll create a new folder within here and save your styles within that folder. So whatever your folder structure is here, it will be mimicked within the user style section. So you can go ahead and save your style called my demo style. And if I save it just in the main styles folder, it will show up under here. Or if I go into one of these subfolders, it will show up as part of that subfolder. So actually, let's just create a new subfolder here called demo. So if we're going to create it in there, hit save. We can see that demo shows up here and we have our new my demo style uh, created within here. So that is really what you need to know as far as uh, creating the styles. And then as far as managing, it's really the same thing. We're going to go right back into that folder. So we see we've got um, application support, capture one styles, and then we've got our different areas here. So if we decide that, you know what, we don't want our new my demo style to be within the demo folder, we want the demo folder to be called something else. We can change it within here rename it, move it around, whatever we need to do. And once we're done, we just need to restart capture one and it will reflect those changes within the hierarchy here. So that is pretty much it as far as creation. Now, one last thing I wanted to show you is when you import uh, particular images, what you can do is have adjustments and it can apply a style. So what I do, for example, is I have this import default black and white. Um, what I tend to like doing is when I'm uh, culling my images, I apply a black and white adjustment to all of them so that I really focus on composition and lighting with that image at the beginning. And then I worry about colors later because, uh, you know, right out of the gate, the color adjustments might not be right. I may need to make various adjustments. So at least the black and white kind of uh, has me focus on the actual, you know, expression of the model, the composition of the image. And then once I pick those favorites, then I'll go in and fine tune the colors as needed. So every time I do an import, I just have this applied to it, which will make a few basic styles adjustments uh, in terms of uh, you know, maybe contrast, apply the black and white, fix, uh, you know, some lens distortion, things of that nature. But at least I don't have to kind of manually select it and apply that to the images. So that's just going to apply to every single image that gets imported and uh, simple as that. So that is really all that I wanted to talk about as far as styles and presets go. I do encourage you to just kind of play around with this, try creating your own styles, try using some styles by getting style packs. There's some free ones out there. And of course, there's ones that you can purchase as well, but certainly experiment by creating your own 
and seeing how far I can take you. And it really is a very nice starting point. Like for example, with these styles that I created, I didn't actually expect myself to um, use them as often as I do. I created them, you know, just for, for other people. But ultimately, as I go through my images, I find this to be a nice starting point to tell me, you know, what direction do I want to take? For example, the color grading or the level of contrast within a particular image, and especially these skin correcting ones, which are really nice for preparing your image for further editing within Photoshop. So again, I hope you found that useful and uh, just make sure that you hit the like button if you like this video and uh, hit the subscribe button if you want to get future updates like this one. We'll see you next time.